Hey guys, come see here. Take two. <laughs> Let's see how this works this time. Welcome back to the stream, guys. Thank you for joining me on this uh, unscheduled stream, special stream, because last uh, time, yesterday, we had a bit of a failure in the internet connection department. I'll tell you all about it later if uh, you have not been up to speed. Anyway, thank you for joining. We have Jay, as always, first. <laughs> we have the first with air quotes, Scotsman. And we have Tom as well. Thank you for joining, guys. How are you doing, Alex? How was uh, Jack's uh, stream? Sorry, I couldn't join back. I was uh, fiddling with some controls and uh, lost track of time. <laughs> Didn't manage to go back anymore. Hey AP, glad you made it man. Electricity is real. Yeah, thank goodness. Kelly, how are you doing? Thank you for joining. Hey Mojo. 107 in the UK, I guess that is, huh? Oh man, <laughs> thank you for joining. <laughs> Appreciate it. And thanks for the nice uh, compliment as well. Does my internet work tonight? So far it does. We'll see you later. Keep your fingers crossed. Not only for the connection, but also for the flight itself. So get your airbags. Not airbags, your uh, paper bags ready. <laughs> I'm just saying, it might be a bumpy ride. Thank you. Hey, Jack. Yarr. Sorry, I couldn't go back. And action. <laughs> How are you doing? Where did you end up in uh, trucking? It was so good, the skies were so beautiful. <clears throat> so, yeah, this time I hope the internet sticks. I hope the flying sticks. We'll see. But I decided to go back to the 737, to Zebo 737 mod. Because I was, I was kind of missing that airliner itch. And uh, I think this is one of the best mods out there. One of the most famous for sure. Especially because it's free as well. Can't imagine such a wonderfully done aircraft free. Yeah, it's just amazing. Anyway, so we'll be flying with this today. We are currently in Albuquerque. And we'll be flying to San Angelo, San Angelo, Texas. Are you guys familiar with the place? But I found an, a job in FS Economy and what we'll be doing this stream is I'll be covering the flight from end to end, like starting from FS Economy, planning the flight, doing the actual flight, and um, results are not guaranteed, but we'll try it. Yeah, we'll try it. The, the winds are not so favorable today in uh, Albuquerque. It's, uh, it's gusting. I think 19 knots gusting to 35 or something, so it's quite intense. So we'll see if we can even manage to take off, but we'll see. We'll uh, just wing it. <laughs> Send me a message on Instagram. Oh, I don't usually check my IG. I probably missed it. You can say it here. Dansk. Is that in Poland? Hey, Tramel. Thanks for joining. Yes, we're in the States. Round two. San Antonio? No, I don't think it's San Antonio. Let, let me show you guys. So let's go from the beginning, okay? How does flight sim even work? Oh yeah, it's an entirely different ball game. I just re realized. Slide it into your DM. Yeah, most probably. Most probably. Now the thing is, there you go. All right. So first things first if you are uh, if you have an fs economy <coughs> account then you log in and how you find jobs for the 737 for airliners in general is you go to airports you look for that aircraft but the different thing is you actually don't click the rentable because for ga planes you kind of rent them the airliners you don't rent them separately they're like all in flights so just leave it as is like that and then go and then you'll get a list of all the airports which have uh, that plane. So for us, for example, in Albuquerque. So you'll see that these are, there are jobs, jobs like this with the A. These are all in flights. So this one is just looking for a pilot. It already has the plane and the, the job there. And that pays net. 
So that's what you get at the end of the trip. Yeah, and then you can look what uh, aircraft this is by looking below. N388MW, that's it. That's indeed a Boeing 737-800. And that's uh, available. What we're getting is this other one, the CFKBC. Yes, so I already got that. So check on that and add select assignments of my flight. And then when you go to your flight here, you should get that list. So we are going from Albuquerque to San Angelo Regional. Does, is, does this sound familiar? Anyway, we'll see. Poland, indeed. Hey, KM! <laughs> hey, Kule! Thanks for joining, guys. Yeah, thank you for joining in, even though this is unscheduled. Yesterday was a bit rough. It's pretty uh, <clears throat> stressful. Even, hey, even! More clumsy flying, yes. So we have the job now. Thank you for joining, guys. And now we plan for the flight. So, scrap all that uh, Delta Airlines thingy. We go back to flying in Clumsy Airlines. Clumsy Airlines 010. <laughs> Departing from uh, Albuquerque, Kilo Alpha Bet, uh, Quebec. Arriving in San Angelo, uh, Kilo Sierra Juliet Tango. Okay, session expired. Thank you. Is that good now? Okay, good. Departing 12.30 Zulu. That should be in 15 minutes. So more or less. That's the plan at least. Then we pick the airframe B738, which is the B737-800. That will fill out automatically all the stuff here. Now make sure you have the units aligned with me. I'm working with the with pounds. And you can save that as default. By the way, can you see my screen? Okay, yes you can. Alright, departure runway 2-1. Uh, two one. Not sure if I agree with that. You can hear the winds actually from outside here. Very strong winds. If I go here, you see the winds. Two one knots gusting three three. Wind one eight zero. He scary. But yeah, I think that can work. So I think what Sim Brief is planning is not too bad. So it's runway two one. Wind is coming from 1.8, so that's quite close. It's not too crosswindy. So it's gusting, but it's a bit of a headwind anyway. Just a little bit of crosswind. So we'll take that. Runway 2.1. Rival runway 1.8. People, passengers, we can align that here. So there are 119 passengers here. So we put 119 there to keep the weights as close as possible. Right? And then we have suggested route, just one. We can double, we can click on sky vector to check how that looks like. I can also plug this in into little nav map. So we'll be pick, taking the Duke 3 departure. And then we'll be going headed southeast towards Texas. All right, one sec, I'll get back to chat. Private message on IG. Oh yeah, I, I don't usually read those. <laughs> I probably skipped it. Thank you for joining, Gule. Glad you made it. It's a bit late there, isn't it? Thank you for uh, joining. You're so lost. <laughs> it is a bit daunting, but uh, just skip through the, the stuff and I'll uh, try to keep it, uh, give a high level explanation as well. It is super daunting in the beginning, but it's so enjoyable. You're not eating now. Really? <laughs> why, why, did I, why do I doubt that? Ah, okay, I see, I see. Very different name, Mojo. Yeah. Now I recognize. Am I missing anybody? Okay, we're good. That looks good. So let's keep that. So what we can do now is I can actually save this. I can generate a uh, an OFP. Is that Does that mean operational flight plan? I guess. So for airliners, sim brief is perfect because it contains the performance um, data for the airliners and for many of the planes. When we were flying with the Premier 1, it didn't have performance information for in SimBrief, so I couldn't use it. I could, but it wouldn't be that accurate. All right, so now we have block fuel of 14,300 pounds. That means that's the fuel we need all in all. That should also be reflected here in the fuel. 
So that means we need to align that with FS economy. But the problem is, this is in pounds. FS economy only accepts gallons. So we need to convert jet A fuel from pounds to gallons. And I have a website for that. This one, myE6b.com slash fuel. So we convert. Let's get that exactly. Paste that here. And that's 2134. Let's round it up. 2135 gallons. So let's uh, defuel because we have so much right now. What did I say? 2135, right? And now we, when we double check, yes, we have 2135 gallons. So we should be good to go there. All right, perfect. So now we have the flight plan. We'll refer to this a lot of times. But what we can also do is we can download FMS. We can download that to our computer so we can load it into uh, explain later into the FMC. Oh crap. Okay. One sec guys. Huh? Let me just copy that. So the FMS file that it saves, put that in your explain 11 output. There should be a folder called FMS plans. Paste that there. And remember the file name because we'll have to type that out later manually. Okay. You've sent me two in the past. Yeah, I probably miss all of them. <laughs> if you can message me elsewhere, I would be able to read them uh, more uh, up to date. <laughs> End game page. Which one? These things? No. Um, lots of third party sites involved here. So many different uh, elements and I love it. Okay, so what we can do as well is we can uh, see, so the routing, we can go and check that in little nav map. So here is little nav map. You guys can see it, right? And we can create a new flight plan. Yeah, I know it, it's so much information. Let's hide some stuff so it doesn't look as complicated. And we can create a flight plan from root. So uh, KSJT Albuquerque. Read root description from Albuquerque to San Angelo via Sid Duke 3. Create flight plan. Perfect. Alright. So that's how it looks. Pretty consistent. The altitude though is not probably, but um, that's fine. <clears throat> this is more for mapping purposes. We can align it. We can look at the cruising altitude, which is 370. Flight level 370. We can assign that here. Make that 370. There you go. That, that, that piece is more in line now. Okay, this also contains like elevation details. You can see the mountains that will be passing through. It will say which altitude is the minimum so that you won't hit any mountains along the way. It will show you the altitude for of your uh, uh, departing and arriving airports. So very, very useful. Gives you a very visual feel. And also, what I like to do, <coughs> bear with me a bit. I'll be back in chat in a bit, okay? What I like doing here is actually saving this into AVTAB. So we can actually see this in game. So what I'd like to do is I can save map as image for AVTAB. Save that like that. It automatically finds the directory. So we can go into the plane. We can uh, go to AVTAB map and we can load the stuff so albuquerque to sjt that's the one yeah that's the one we saw in uh, in little nav map and that has real-time moving maps so we see our waypoints top of climb how far it is what heading we're taking so we have a very visual feel even with the uh, the the map itself in the surrounding stuff very nice Right, <clears throat> use some ad blue. <laughs> Which one is this? <laughs> and that's 
under Alex's seat. Where there are fuel tanks in a plane? Ah, it's it's in the wings. So if I show you this one, fuel weight and balance, yeah, you'll see the blue part. Those are the parts with the fuel. So the wings in the center contain fuel, but most of them are in the wings normally. Hey, ghost. There you go. Ghost actually answered already. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Seems like KPS. You need to be a real pilot to do it. Yeah, we really need to learn a lot. And I've been learning so much. I'm enjoying it. It's so immersive. Don't play KSP because you're not a real astronaut. <laughs> Too much realism frustrates me. I can understand that. For me, it's the opposite though. So it really depends on your preference. <laughs> Are you guys seated already? Buckle up. You work for an airline company in real life. Oh, nice. That's fancy. Okay, maybe we can get some uh, inputs, insights from you. Little nav map. Uh, little nav map here in the upper left it's quite small little and then one word is little second word is nav map November Alpha Victor Mike Alpha Papa okay so that's good we are set so now we can start with the actual flight right so this is this is the new thing since the last time First, I went with 4K textures. So before we were flying with uh, non 4K, not sure what the resolution was, but now everything should be higher res. I'm hoping my system can handle it. I did turn down some settings though. So far, we all have 45 FPS and it's uh, looking not too bad. So we'll see. But what I really enjoy now, remember before when we were flying with the 737, I had like a paper checklist. I still have it with me, but we actually don't need it anymore. I just discovered this and it's game changing. There's actually an app called um, a plugin called X Checklist and it can synchronize the different uh, checklists that people create and it's online, it's it's in game and it automatically updates when you do something like for example flaps up. If you put your flaps up, it detects it. So you don't have to do it manually and you really have a checkbox. Maybe it's better I just show you. There it is. So it's quite small maybe in your screen, might need to zoom in, but uh, that's the intro page. And then I have a button map for the check. I feel like P1D now with uh, the checklist, the electronic checklists. And you have the pre preliminary flight checks and all, all that stuff. Some of the things are manual, like the windows cannot be simulated. So that one you have to check manually. But for example, this one, the next one is GPU. And you can actually put in like, if you plug in the GPU here that automatically gets detected and moves on to the next one and now if you look we indeed have the GPU connected right there this is so good yeah this makes me not forget anything 4k I don't like it <laughs> it looks so much better good all right have a good night Mojo thank you for dropping by and uh, yes hopefully it's not too daunting after a while Anyway, I absolutely love this checklist. It's super useful. All right, so uh, before we go with that though, I think I'd want to set the fuel weight and balance. So how we do this is we basically have to first log into X Economy, start the flight to get our uh, fuel updated. There you go. So that puts in a couple of fuels, um, a couple of... Uh, thousands of pounds of fuel 14.5 we can check that against the sim brief and uh, check the fuel the uh, the weights so if I go here 14.3 is the fuel so not too far away and then there is a, a weights part here that one so zero fuel weight should be 119.3 and takeoff weight should be 133.1. That's what we have to align. Yeah, see the, the, the takeoff weight is different. So I think we'll have to add to the payload. 133.1 is 4.9. So 26, 27.3. Let's try it. Because with, with FS Economy, you can change the payload, but you cannot change the fuel. If you change the fuel, FS Economy will tag that as uh, cheating and it will stop the flight. 
so you cannot cheat the fuel. Alright, 133.1 takeoff weight. 133.1 takeoff weight. Perfect. Alright, great. Okay, we're good. GPU. Thank you. Thanks, Ghost. Yeah, that helps. Crown power unit. So it's that generator thing. There. Which helps power up the plane before we power it on itself. So it has a bit of a starter, a bit of a guide. Right, so now if we go to the panel, we have clear indications of what we need to do. We tr close the guard of the battery, which turns it on. We check the gear status lights, so three up top, three at the bottom there, all green, so we take that manually. You see some of the stuff already gets automatically checked. Ground power for DC amp, so we simply turn on ground power. So we, the GPU is connected, but it's not yet turned on, so we turn it on now. And that's a beautiful sound. Right? Panel lighting, we don't really need it. Wheel well light. I think this is for the inside the landing gears. We turn that on because the uh, pilot monitoring will be walking around in the exterior and checking stuff from there in real life. Position lights to steady. That's with the nav lights. That's the green and red. Uh, green on the right and red on the left side. Those are those lights. And that needs to be on whenever you have GPU connected. Okay. And then electric hydraulic pumps to on these guys because the the guy doing the walk around will also need to check that the hydraulics are okay, right? Then we have the fire test. We can actually skip this. Like if you're in a hurry, you don't really have to do them. You can just check through them because I mean, this is a sim, so you don't really need to do everything. But if you're trying to simulate everything, then this is very cool. And this is th this checklist is actually from um, indirectly from flight deck to sim. He's a YouTuber who uh, is a real pilot and he also flies the 737 in, in game in the sim. So it's like the real deal. So he knows his stuff. And uh, one guy, the author of this checklist in particular, watched his videos, took note of all the things he said and put them in a checklist. So this is pretty accurate. Have a good night, Kelly. Thank you for dropping by. Enjoy your... Uh, what are you playing now? Farming? Enjoy your farming. Fire test! <laughs> That's the matches. <laughs> Alright, so we go and test. Fault, APU debt. Okay, I don't really know everything here, but I'm just going to follow them. There we go. Extinguisher test. Three green on one, three green on two. Good. Go back to overhead. Emergency exit lights, we close that. See how easy it is compared to before when I had paper and I always forgot where we were. Turn on fasten seat belts, click that attend sign for that nice chime. Okay, that didn't get captured. Alright, we just skip through it. <clears throat> Alright, next up. Co-pilot, put the mic selector on... Uh, one VHF, that's this guy. We test cargo fire, which is all the way here. Circuit breakers, we normally will look at the back, see if anything is popped up. That means the circuit breaker is, uh, uh, how do you call it? Is broken, popped. But that's only si not simulated here, really. Going back to the overhead, we simulate stall warning. Both of them. By the way, is the sound okay, guys? Is it too weak? I also found a plugin which allows me to change the volume from here. Makes it so easy. Let me maximize the interior sounds. Steam powered Boeing. <laughs> this is too easy. I don't like it. <laughs> I know, right? Oh no, something is popped up. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> Jader, all the way. 
Alright, turn off. Card close. Good. Max selector, one VHF there. Left and right IRS mode. Okay, so let's get our plane settled in. Don't know where it is. Change this to heading. That's the timer of when the IRS systems will align. Normally, I think it's 11 minutes. There's an option though where you can make that shorter. I made it just one minute. It's a lot easier. And LE devices. What is LE? Are they French? Le devices. <laughs> Everything looks good. The lights look good. Let's go to the MCP. The uh, what is the what does the MCP mean again? Something control panel. Oh, I always forget. Master lights, test this one here. So we light up all the lights, make sure that everything is working. We look around, that looks pretty good. It off, autopilot disconnect, the yellow ones and the red ones. We check the pressure, barometric, set the local QNH. So with that, we go to AVTAB. We go and enter Albuquerque. In here it says uh, altimeter 2971. So we set that here. 2971. There you go. Minimums reference barrow. And then we set the minimums to airport elevation plus 1,000 feet. In this case, it's 5354 plus 1,000, so it's 6354. Hey, Sheng! 18 months, man! <laughs> FIFA the second, two babies now. <laughs> Amazing, man, thank you. Thanks for the resub, GG. Leading edge, ah, leading edge flaps, Le Master. <laughs> Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Leading edge. Trailing edge and leading edge. Audio is good. Thank you. Remember the first time you tried to start out the plane? It's at least two hours. Yeah, the learning curve is definitely steep. Super steep. So hopefully now it's a bit better. 6354. Let's go and set that in our minimums. That should be the, I think, the flap uh, retraction altitude if we're taking off. I'm not 100% sure about it though, but this one says uh, minimum flap retraction altitude. So I think you wait for that, then you retract. 6354. Something like that. Yes. Good. Weather radar is off. Standby altimeter. So this guy here for the backup. We also set that to be the same value 2971. Good. Clock, everything is good. Let's go and check the pilot oxygen mask. I love the sound effects here. Hear, hear this. Sounds like Darth Vader. Love it. Let's go back to the overhead, test our Mac Air speed. The clackers. Good. Then we do the takeoff config horn sound when you are not properly set off for takeoff yet and you try to uh, push up your throttle it should have a horn sound exactly like so with the warning there for takeoff config warns you that you have not yet done all the configs necessary full flight of a380 from paris to lax on youtube nice clumsy air <laughs> It's, it's, it's great that they can do that though. How can they manage to film inside the cockpit? I thought it was like confidential and everything. They always have a... I thought there was a problem like... Filming because it's like... Uh, company rules or something. Hey Icewall, thank you for uh, joining and thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome to the stream. Oh, it's a bit bright, isn't it? Just realized. Should be okay. Good. Or any guy. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, Stinky Lama. No transcoding, GG, man. <laughs> well, I hope it still works somehow. 
LE devices help control high lift to increase wing lift and decrease stall speed during takeoff and landing. It's perfect for the takeoff and landing, that's true. LE, leading edge indeed. So it's not French. Oh man. <laughs> ah, it was passenger view. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah, I would love to see a cockpit view, right? Like in GA, in the GA flights, like P1D. He can film his entire flight, no problem, from inside the cockpit. I would love to have something like that inside a commercial plane, but I don't think we'll ever get that. Unless we make our own company and uh, <laughs> set that as a rule. Okay, first officer also checking the uh, AP disconnect. One and two, that's one. That's two. Good. Uh, also the barometric pressure. Now with Zebo. there's actually a nice feature where you can mimic. Where was that? Um, there's a uh, feature where you can mimic the trying to find it what you do on the pilot side it gets reflected on the co-pilot side as well and it's very very useful but I can't find it it's here somewhere but yeah just find it somewhere I know not very descriptive <laughs> So that helps uh, save time, so you don't have to synchronize everything. Not everything is synced though, which is good. So one of the checklists as well is setting UTC time here, Zulu time. And then we also test his oxygen mask, of course. Don't, hand, don't want him uh, hanging around afterwards. And then we test the GWPS. GPWS, is it? I think it's wrong spelling. Those are sounds that you'd never want to hear when you're in an actual flight. It's good that they're there, but you hope you never need them. Sure thing, Stinky Lama. Thank you for dropping my. Appreciate it. Catch you on YouTube. <laughs> Salamat. <laughs> hey, Gato. Good uh, morning. Good evening, rather. Yeah, exactly, Jay, right? Confidential for sure. So yeah, that's that's the dream, but uh, you know, the best we can hope is uh, some some uh, footage from inside simulators, but by real pilots, like for example, what went, what mentor pilot does. That's more than enough for now. All right, next up we have FMC. Now I do have a problem with my FMC right now. I think that's something you don't want to hear when you're going on a flight. Me, <laughs> it says nav data out of date, and we happen to be right at that exact day when we're past the nav data error rack cycle so if you look at the dates validity this is actually valid from april 25 <clears throat> to may 22 today is now may 23 on my end so we are actually beyond the validity and the new cycle has not yet been released i tried changing the dates a while ago this is what i was fiddling with because i was getting really ocd about the nav data out of date but I think it's checking the my system date, my PC date, not the in in the, the the flight sim date. Because no matter what date I choose in the flight sim, it still says uh, out of date here. So we'll just have to live with that. It shouldn't have an impact with the actual uh, results. That's pretty updated. It's like one day old, one day out of date. So that should be fine. There you go. Ground proximity warning system. Thank you for helping with the acronyms. Appreciate that, Ghost. The usual landing sounds on clumsy air. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, uh, I hope not. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't uh, discount that completely. Time travel airlines. So aircraft model seventy seven eight hundred winglets. Uh, engine rating twenty six k. Nav database. Let's say it's not out of date. Iris position. Let's set our position now, so the airplane knows where it is. So you can see everything is still black here. But if you go to pause in it, go to next page, go to GPS, click that. That copies it to the... Uh, what do we call this thing? Oh, I always use that term but I forgot now. Brain fart. Scratch pad, there you go. Scratch pad and paste that here in the IRS position. 
then it will now know where we are and it will not complain anymore not have a just black screen yeah so that's good reference airport we are actually in albuquerque so let's set that here gate i don't think we really need to put that in let's go forward with the route now being a smart fmc it uh, automatically copies the reference airport here so we can just paste that and we can go for uh, Kilo Sierra Juliet Tango, San Angelo, Texas. And then this is where the company route is going to take place. So we have to remember the file name when we save the Simbri flight plan. I think that's Albuquerque. And then the destination airport and then 01. Let's see if it's able to see get that. There you go. It does load it up, I think. So if you look for the root, uh, direct CME logo SJT, is that right? Let's double check and seem brief. So if you look for the root here, CME logo SJT. Yeah, J15 though via logo, not direct. Let me double check that that is accurate. Yes, it is accurate. Okay, good. Brain fart control, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay that looks good some things are not yet set though i think the departure stuff is not uh, set here okay let's activate that i think we have to also execute normally you, do, you don't need to do this but i think there's a bug with loading company route you have to execute it in order for the departure and arrival airports to uh, get saved that way so it says we are departing runway 26 right and via the duke 3 departure transition CME does that make sense uh, runway 26 Duke CME there you go and we are arriving um, I forgot let's double check so it doesn't paste everything but it really helps a lot runway 18 okay runway 18 oh we don't have ILS but that's fine our nav should be fine I'm not really familiar how Arnav works with this plane though, but we'll see. Do we go with Evil on oh, no, steep transition? Let's have a look. Um, I don't think so. Let's have a look with Little Nav Map for better visualization. So if you go for runway 18, uh huh, Arnav. So evil, honob, steep, nah. I think steep is not bad. It's a bit farther though. Yeah, let's go with steep so we have a, a nice approach. We're coming from the same direction anyway. So let me put that into the flight plan so but we remove SJT here there you go so we directly go there afterwards that makes more sense I'll have to adjust the flight plan a bit and I'll have to adjust the image a bit so let me get a snapshot of that uh, there you go and then let me save that again into AV tab. But I can just override the previous one. Okay. So it says steep, isn't it? Steep. But then we'll have to remove SJT. So we go click that one, override SJT. So we go from logo to steep. Is that right? We go from logo to steep directly. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Now that's not exactly what is in SimBrief, but shouldn't be too far away. <coughs> that shouldn't be too bad. There you go. And then we can also double check that here in the the plan. If you go to plan mode, you can zoom out, and we can go step by step on uh, where it's taking us. 
Daddy Larley Taco Simi Inc. logo and direct to Steep. And then, yeah, exactly as we planned in Little Nav Map. Perfect. All right. It's looking good. All right. So, origin, destination, flight number. We don't have flight number yet. Clumsy 010, right? It's the one. Routing. It's good. No discontinuity. Activated route. All right. Perf in it. <clears throat> Coming back to chat. <laughs> 1243 years later. This is actually the fun. And I know you know this so much, Jay. This is mo like half the fun of actually flying the plane is setting it up, especially with airliners. App to snap picks in Android. No, I just used the built in uh, screenshot feature. It depends on what the model you have, but there's a key for taking screenshots. All right, zero fuel weight. You can just uh, click that on the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Line select key, left line select key. Rever reserves, uh, we can double check that in sim brief. Sim brief, uh, that's the sum of alt n and finres. So alternate and final reserve. I think final. So if we add both of those, oh man, maths. 5, 6.1, 6 6.2, 6 6, 6.3. Okay, 6.3, something like that. So let's put in 6.3. Put that under reserves. And then we go for cost index. Cost index is up here, CI 38. And then we also need the flight level 370 for the cruising altitude. So we plug in 38 and we plug in 370. If you look here, the FMC actually has a recommendation already. Tells us that uh, 376 is the recommended one. That's fine. Good. ISA deviation of the top of climb. We'll have to go back. This is why SimBrief is so useful because there are so many details that we need to plug into the FMC. 236076, that's the wind heading and the speed. 236 degrees at 76 knots. At top of climb. 23676. ISA deviation there is uh, positive 3. So that's 3. I think it's Celsius. I hope. So that's good. Transition altitude is 18,000. That's when we shift from saying 18,000, 17,000 feet to flight level. That's when we switch to flight level. In the US, it's 18,000. Good. Uh, it also wants us to schedule the FMC descend forecast. Uh, this one I'm not really familiar. This is the first time I encountered this in this checklist. I didn't do this before. So this one, it wants us to plug it things in from the top of descent, I guess. But if you have more info, let me know. Not really familiar with this. So I plug in 370 23863. <clears throat> but then again, this is descent, so maybe below 370 once we start our descent. He checking the uptime already. <laughs> Preach it. <laughs> yes, I'm learning so much. Although it takes a bit of time, yeah, it has to be. It's part of the the experience, you know, all this setup, all the pre pre flight planning. This is part of the excitement, and it, this just really triggers my uh, triggers in a good way my geekiness, and I love it. So three oh six two two eight forty nine. Oh, so many numbers. Three oh six flight level three oh six two oh eight. At 49 knots, that's the wind there. So I guess that's important for the fuel planning calculations that it's going to do. Did I just look elsewhere? 22949, 306, 22949. 20949. Okay, next one. Sorry, I'm switching windows, but hopefully you guys can keep up. And then we have one more. It's 044. 
So that's uh, 4,400 feet. 441726. 4417226. So we can see that as we go lower, the winds go weaker as well. Makes sense. The send weather. <clears throat> and then you can also set the local QNH and the ISA deviation at the arrival. But that's based on European, I think, the QNH, the 1013 instead, the hectopascals instead of the 29 or 9 or 3 altimeter setting. I'm just going to skip that. FMC fix, we don't really need. That just puts a uh, like a, a, a visual, like radial, near some specific spots. Like if you want to know if you're 10 miles from the airport, you can have the, the fix. It's not really a necessity in my point of view, so we'll just skip that. Learning is the constant thing in this. Yes, absolutely agree. I love it. It's not realistic when you use that side checklist. Oh, that's fine. I mean, if you if you use a real checklist, if you use a side checklist, it's all good. <coughs> At least in my point of view. And in this way, you can actually see where I'm at. So it's better for the stream. <coughs> this also helps me definitely. So I don't skip through some stuff. So we go and open service doors and the cargo doors. Block fuel, we set that already when we set the FS economy job. We started it already, right? Just double checking. Yeah. Good. Service crews on ground start. So now we'll hear some nice ambient sounds of people coming in fixing all the stuff around the airport. Good. So the overhead. Yeah. I don't think we need to go into that level of realism. <laughs> that would like be equivalent to me wearing like a pilot uniform and a hat and everything. Not too bad, but maybe that's next level, huh? Yo damper, turn it on. Looks good. Fuel pumps turn it on as well. In our case, we also turn on the center fuel pumps because for some reason FS Economy sets fuel in the middle tank. Most of the fuel is in there actually. I do want to actually transfer that to the wings, but I don't know how. Cross feed valve, we check if it's working. Yeah, that's working. Good. We turn on the window heats now. And we also turn on the trim air. Set the air conditioning, the left one to auto, so we get some air for our folks. Cruising altitude is 370 if I remember correctly. But the landing altitude I forgot. Uh, let's double check with little nav map. This guy says 1918 feet. Round that on the nearest 50, that's 1950. 1950. There you go. <clears throat> Do it! <laughs> RPG stream. <laughs> yeah, if I feel worthy enough to wear a pilot's uniform, then yes, but that will not be for a while. Maybe a first officer's uniform is uh, more apt, right? Take it one step at a time. <laughs> For more realism. <laughs> Astronaut suit, helmet and all. Yeah. I'll, I'll be on the lookout for some pilot-related uniforms. We'll probably have that in the future. Once I get better, we learn how to fly first and then we wear the uniform, right? So we don't disrespect it. That's my excuse. Okay, now that the inspection is done, wheel well off, wing light we don't really need, it's a bright logo light, don't really need. Okay, so now we go and enable flight directors on both the captain and the first officer side. Of course, this to SID, VOR, as raw data backup, so normally I think what you would do is depending on your flight plan, in addition to the GPS route, we're also going to program in the VORs in your nav here so that in case the GPS doesn't work, you still have a way to navigate using the VOR. 
But for us, I'm hoping that doesn't fail, so I'm just going to skip it, okay? Bank angle below flight level 300 is 25 degrees, so that sets the autopilot how, 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 how much it banks, how much it turns, rotates left and right. So 25 degrees is the suggested value. Runway heading according to charts, so we'll have to go back to uh, AVTAB and check. Let's go and look for the airport diagram. Now this one is made possible thanks to the Navigraph chart subscription I recently got. So I can actually see the charts and link that here in-game thanks to AVTAB. So Navigraph AVTAB integration. So we're going to re take runway 26, that's this one, right? Or was it 2? Wait a minute, what? Did I set it up correctly? Let's double check. And... 2 I said it wrong, 2 Dang it, okay, 2 is here. And that uh, runway heading is 214 degrees, okay. Let me just fix that. 214 degrees. Let me set that in the FMC. So actually, if you go for departure, it's not 2.6, it's actually 2.1. There you go. Bye, Mrs. Clumsy. Okay, and that should be good. Everything else is the same. That's perfect. I like, I like this FMC. It's super detailed. Gives you an idea what's going to change, giving the highlights. Also gives you an idea what's going to change, given the broken lines, broken white lines there. So you can see it's going to just barely change from the airport, but after that it's the same. That's good. Alright. Runway heading is good. Initial climb clearance, uh, that depends on the departure charts. Since we're taking the... Do you guys remember which seat we're taking? I don't. Uh, Duke 3, yeah that sounds good. That sounds right. Mrs. Clumsy would like that uniform. <laughs> That's true. Oh my goodness. No comment. <laughs> Alright, so let's look for the initial altitude. Do not exceed 250 until passing Jet OK. Where is Jet OK? That one. Okay, that makes sense. Uh -huh. There is usually an initial altitude here, but it depends. Sometimes it just gets assigned by ATC. Top altitude. Uh, th there we go. Okay, runway 21. Climb 214 degrees to 5860. Yeah, that's the feet, right? 5860. So that's the initial one. No, actually, 5860 is quite low because we're already at 5000 feet. So there's no really initial. It depends. So I guess it depends. So we just basically like follow our nav. So let's go and 9,000 maybe. Cross jet okay at or below 9,000, which means we cannot go beyond 9,000 until we go past jet okay. So let's put 9,000 as the initial altitude. And I, I remember what pilots like to do. So they like to set that to 9,100. That 100 is just to signify that they haven't gotten clearance from the air traffic controller yet. Once they do get clearance, they set that to 9,000. So that's just a visual indicator for them. Auto brakes, rejected takeoff, RTO. So in case we do a rejected takeoff, that means when we cancel our takeoff and we stop our our acceleration, then that gets automatically detected and applies the brakes accordingly. Fuel flow reset. Good system oil pressure. Yeah, that looks good. 2.8 Alright, now we stop the service crews from fiddling with the stuff behind us. And we can close the forward and aft service doors. And we can open the entry doors because we can now let the passengers in. Right? Start the flight leg. There's a, there, there are other plugins that I haven't uh, checked out yet. There's actually a different plugin responsible for loading the passengers. You know, you actually see people or actually get people loading up one at a time, things like that. Missed some messages again. 
some parachutes would be great as well. <laughs> I'm not sure we'd like that. <laughs> Hopefully we won't need it. How long is this process? So I heard from Mentor Pilot that um, he's an expert. He has like, I don't know, 14 years experience or something like that. So for him, he can he can do it in 15 minutes, everything in 15 minutes because he mostly has everything in his brain, even with the checklists. 15 minutes is good. He says the, the longer procedure is actually having the passengers get loaded because you can imagine how long that takes, the queuing, the loading up. But in terms of preparing the plane, 15 minutes is all it needs. Okay, so we checked the route, we checked it, landing fuel, ground distance, active runway, VOR frequency, let's skip that. Okay, everybody is on board I think. Close the doors. Close the cargo, all the bags are loaded up. And after that's done, we can now the announcement. Folks from the cockpit like to welcome you on board. We're ready up front. Everybody's closed up outside. Uh, we're just waiting uh, to get some of our uh, performance numbers and uh, the clearance from uh, air traffic control and we should be underway. It's our pleasure, our pleasure having you on board with us today. Sit back, relax, uh, enjoy the flight. Should be underway here shortly. Thanks for flying with Delta there. There you go. Next step is to compare the zero fuel weight the actual I think <clears throat> and uh, compare it with the load sheet because I guess like if some passengers don't turn up then their zero fuel weight would be different in our case it's the same so just skip that then we can execute now the performance init page like that FMC cross weight within the flight plan range yes 133.1 exactly it's the takeoff weight this one I don't have, takeoff performance calculation, they have a separate app for this. I think in real pilots, in corporate pilots, they have an iPad app for it. Computes the flaps, computes the speeds and all that stuff. We don't have it, so we'll just let the FMC do it. Next up, N1 limit. You compute what is the limit our engine should uh, rev up to, how much power it should be introducing. So we set the temperature, we can just click that, line select key. And then there's actually the, the selected temperature, is it selected? But this is mainly in the takeoff D rate, these are mainly possible when you have that takeoff performance calculation. Because the, the idea here is, you can see the N1 is 99.9, so that's 99.9% I think. So that's very high. And it's 26k. So the idea is to derate the engine so it doesn't take up as much performance. You know, not to do. The idea is to take off with as little possible, little power as possible. So we try to derate it, but I cannot do that because I don't have that performance calculation app. So I just stick to the default value. It would be a nice immersive experience, but I think. I'm not sure if there's even a paid version for it for normal normal folks like me. If you guys know a, a performance calculator, let me know, okay? Maybe I can integrate it with this process. Right? And also the takeoff laps, because I don't have that performance calculator, I just always just set 5. It's anyway usually 5, I think. There you go. Set the center of gravity. And we get the trim setting there. And then we... So there are suggested V1, VR, and V2 speeds. We just click those to apply them and put them on the speed tape. And then we set the V2 speed as the initial speed here, 142. Something like that. Right, trim value is 4.94. So we try to trim that a bit. Something like that. Okay, good. Now we can close the flight deck door. And we can start the APU. Let me just uh, observe something. Because that, I think, opens when you open the APU, when you start the APU. 
I'm not, I'm not sure if that's animated. So we start the APU, the auxiliary power unit as Ghost mentioned. EGT will climb up, that's the temperature. It will climb up and it will stabilize after a while. And we'll see that behind, the APU is actually here behind. We'll see the exhaust booming in if I did it correctly. There you go. So we'll wait for it. You can start hearing it now. So the APU is just like a mini engine. It's mainly responsible for the uh, the not the actual engines running, but the uh, interiors, like the electricity and all that stuff, so it can power its own. So we can remove the ground power unit already. <laughs> Duty free shopping. <laughs> Come back quick. You can still climb through in one of the windows. <laughs> all right, so EGT is uh, stabilizing. We get that blue uh, color. That blue indicator, that means APU generator is good. It's ready, so we turn it on. And now we are actually using APU power, not GPU. In real life, I think what they do as well is they set the timer uh, for that. One minute before they turn the APU bleed on. And while that's running, we disconnect the GPU. And if you did things correctly, nothing should power down. Okay, good. Because if you did not do things correctly and you disconnect that, and you, then you'll hear that, which is mm. <laughs> quite embarrassing. So thankfully it didn't happen. So we are correctly assigned. We are correctly using the APU power now, the APU generator. Let's assume, let's uh, simulate that that is one minute already. <laughs> And let's turn on APU bleed. That gives uh, some time for the APU to warm up. Right? Chimes. Good. Contact ATC for uh, IFR clearance and startup. So how does that go? It would go something like uh, Albuquerque, Clumsy, 010, request clearance to uh, San Angelo Regional, something like that, and then the clearance, you know how it goes, I'm not an expert at it, as you guys saw in the previous streams. So let's say that we've uh, gotten it already, and then we do the readback, and we say... Let me have a cheat sheet here. Okay, Duke 3 departure and then as filed, initial altitude 9,000 feet, expect flight level 370 10 minutes after, uh, trans squawk, I don't know, 2543, <laughs> So get SID, initial altitude, let's say we've been given clearance already, oops, it's 9,000, not 8,000. Did I say 8,000? You know what I mean. And what's the squawk we set for ourselves? Let's go 2546. Some arbitrary number. Okay. We're good. Coming back now. Open the door. <laughs> Sorry, you can you can maybe like hang on tight to the side here. I, I see there's like a a nice hanging spot here. You'll be like Daenerys riding the dragon. You can you can hang tight there <laughs> on that fin. <laughs> okay. So now we can request push and start. Albuquerque Clumsy 010. Request push back and start. Is that how it goes? I'm not really sure. And then we s they say push back and start proved. I think even before that, we should actually schedule, we should actually have the thing ready. What I've learned is when you contact ATC, you should be ready to push back and start already. So that means having the tug already attached and all that stuff. So what we can do is we do pet better push back. But before that, we have to plan first where we're going. So we look at the airport route. We are taking runway 21 and we are currently here. So we'll be taking... 
probably uh, will be facing left supposedly we'll be taking charlie crossing runway 8 charlie echo towards runway 21 yeah charlie then echo okay so that means our pushback should make us turn left or face left afterwards so we let's plan it this is the better pushback plugin which is amazing so we push back something like this <clears throat> and I guess that should be enough right that's the plan all right captain got the directions let me know through the menu when you're ready <laughs> couldn't find them <laughs> rip okay let's request the push back great news captain your toes coming thank you missing your flight because you couldn't find Twinkies <laughs> a wing seat oh yeah that's as close as possible as you can get as immersive as you can get an exterior view oh rip tug whoop yeah the plugin does not do well with the collisions but <laughs> how can you program all of that right Which one is smoother, having low latency on or off? Uh, low latency on is better if, uh, in terms of the lag. So less lag, but I think it's a bit more taxing on the bandwidth. I'm not really sure. All right, looks like the doors and hatches are closed and we're ready to connect. So if you look here, he'll actually be lifting up the plane. So he's like hugging the nose wheel and then lifting it up. You can see from, do you see it? No, you cannot. That one. Maybe I can find a better angle. There you go. So it's actually going to lift us up a bit. Lift the nose wheel off the ground. Anytime now. There you go. Just a very, very minor, very subtle lift there. Welcome aboard, Captain. Toes connected, bypass <laughs> stands inserted. Go and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. Okay, there you go. So now we can remove the parking brake so he can start moving us back. Here comes the pushback. Light him up. So we contacted ATC. Start the pushback. That gets detected. I should have turned on my anti collision lights before we moved. That's fine. Turn off air conditioning for now. Bear with me, guys. And now we can start the engine proper. So now we monitor N2, which is this guy. Once it hits 25%, then we can start introducing fuel. Oil pressure. We have oil pressure rising. That's good. 25% N2. We introduce fuel like so. We keep our hand here. And we monitor the EGT and the N1 accordingly. So we keep our hand so in case something goes wrong, if the EGT goes up so so fast, I think they call it hot start or something, we can cut off the fuel. Okay, starter has cut off. That one automatically switched back to auto. We do the same thing for engine one. If you're in the wing, do you know we'll be going around in circles all night long? <laughs> Why? <laughs> You can adjust the flaps as necessary. Oil pressure. Oil pressure rising. Idle. Just about done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. And one is climbing. Okay, good. Let's remove the parking brake or set the parking brake. And we're disconnecting the tow. Give me just a moment. Okay, that's back to auto. We heard that and starter has cut off. Good. And in this one, I added manually. This one is not part of the default checklist. You can see lower DU display off. I added that. It's just a text file, but it automatically detects it. Because what I learned from Mentor is normally they would also hide the display here, this display. So that when if something goes wrong, it this would pop up and they would know that something is wrong. So what I do is I turn that off. That gets detected and it moves on. Beautiful. And now we can enable the engine generators. 
like so, like so. And now we can turn off the APU switch. And we're disconnected. Stick one pin on the right, take it easy and have a safe flight. Thank you. So that one, the tug is moving to the right. We have to look for him and he'll be going out and he'll be showing us the bypass pin. We have to know that that's been released so that we know that we can fly safely then. I think that's something for the nose wheel, nose wheel controls or something. I think so. The bypass pin bypasses the nose wheel controls. Yeah, that's the one. That's the bypass pin he's showing us. So that means it's no longer being bypassed. Okay, and correct me if I get anything wrong there. Alright, probe heats on A and B. We can now turn on the air conditioning again. Set the packs to auto. Isolation valve to auto. What is the isolation valve for? I'm not really sure the reason. If you bleed, we can turn off. We can set the takeoff flaps. Takeoff flaps is five. That's three notches down. So if you go to the co-pilot side, that's three notches down to five. You'll see that the the indicator is adjusting slowly to a five, and this is lift flaps transit. <laughs> <laughs> leading edge flaps and that's the guy extending here that guy so now we have flaps 5 set normally I think they do this all while taxiing so they can multitask but for us let's do it one step at a time because I'm a beginner it's for isolation things <laughs> let's say level flight won't be possible okay <laughs> <laughs> that sounds bad. Okay, good thing we have that set. Alright, so I'll set on track IR. Let's go and flight controls forward, back. Let me adjust my mic here a bit. There we go. And full right. It's good. Rudder, left and right. Good. And then the six pack push. It. Contact ATC. Albuquerque ground. Clumsy 010. Ready for taxi. And then the uh, guy will say something along the lines of taxi via taxi runway 21 via Charlie. Either hold short or cross runway 8. Echo. So taxi via Charlie cross runway 8 towards Echo runway to 1 something like that right now we can turn on our lights runway lights and taxi lights we can now release the parking brake we can do our brake check that's working and there's a nice uh, nice uh, how do you say guide here it says maximum 15 knots during turns and 25 knots in straight roads speed limit or speed guidance please address passenger before taking off actually there should be a chimes only in a 10 button yeah there you go all right LNAV. Auto throttle is active. Cabin lighting set for takeoff. I'm not really sure if you can play multiplayer. That would be so good, right? Having a synchronized cockpit. I think there are third party plugins to, to simulate that, but I haven't explored them yet. If you guys see anything, let me know. You probably can explore that option. Let's say they asked us to hold short on runway 8, just so we have an excuse to turn on the other stuff. So we turn on weather radar, which is here. Turn on airport as well. And then on the first officer's side, we turn on terrain radar. So we can see some mountains. This is the, the, uh, the airplane.
with all the the airport with the huge mountains near runway 26 and it, it's a very hard approach like let me show you can I can I show that but maybe I can just describe it so this is runway 26 these ones on the right are all mountains and when you have to approach when you land via runway 26 you cannot just approach it from here direct on you have to like approach from parallel downwind like here and then do a U-turn, like a base, and a sh very short final here. So it's a very tricky approach because there are mountains all over here. And that's the first uh, flight I did with the 737 after a while. <laughs> so not very good. Okay, anyway, proceed. Uh, whenever we cross a runway, we have to turn on our strobe. So that is the lighting here for this one. Position, strobe, and steady. There you go. Look left, look right. No planes inbound. Good. Never reads your message. <laughs> what did you say? <clears throat> latency. Low latency is good. <laughs> That's the short version. Charlie, turn left on Echo. Just this one. Yeah, that's Echo. I'm trying to look for a red. Vatsim. But Vatsim is not multi cockpit multiplayer inside the cockpit it's one player per plane <clears throat> alright we're almost there I think Jack wants to be the stewardess <laughs> Oh, goodness. Alright. Hold short line. Let's contact ATC. Probably the tower. Tower, clumsy 010. Ready for departure. Runway 21. Holding short. And then they'll say something like winds. What are the winds, by the way? It's a good question. So let's check. Winds 190, gust 21, two gust 30. Oh my goodness, how does that work? Altimeter 2968. Okay, let's say we got clearance. And then they'll say uh, either a heading or a direct to. So for us, it's direct to Jetok right something like that or our nav to jet talk i'm not sure how they word it okay so uh right cleared for takeoff runway to one direct to jet okay clumsy zero one zero something along those lines so contact atc set the transponder Taxi light off. Left and right landing lights are on. We start the timer. Okay, and then we set to 40% thrust. We're good. Actually, we slow down a bit here because this requires a very sharp turn where's our food <laughs> that's a good question you're not cleared for takeoff you have a passenger throwing peanuts from the right wing <laughs> oh that's not something that <sighs> about the stewardess nope <laughs> hopefully not 
good 40% thrust okay set toga let's prepare for that takeoff Thank goodness that wasn't so bad. Positive rate, gear up. 400. 400, turn on autopilot. And let's increase the speed to 210 knots. And then we'll retract the flaps bit by bit. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'll catch what up with you in a bit, okay? There we go. Positive rate, gear up. Yeah, we're good. Extract or retract the flaps bit by bit using the speed tape as a guide. So when that says up, put the flaps up. And that should be good. So now we can enable VNAV. And we do after takeoff checks, landing gear off, auto brakes off, terrain radar off on the first officer's That's side. Good. So we are past jet okay, so let's see. Let's extend that a bit. Forgot to bring your parachute. <laughs> so we are good to go now. I can go and check out the departure chart to see how we're progressing. 11,000 to BN. Okay, that's at 11,000. Alright. Let's contact ADC. Yeah, that's 11,000 to be in there. So what do we say? That's the question. Uh, they will ask us to uh, switch to approach frequency or departure frequency. So we can say departure comes C010. 11,000 feet direct to Bien and then they'll let us know if we can uh, climb above or not or just stay there radar contact all that stuff 11,000 above actually yeah it's above not below my bad so we can actually go up now so that means we can go let's say 15,000 question is how do we trigger that then I'm not really sure <laughs> I've never done this before how do we trigger an uh, increase do we choose level change or who knows <laughs> William Shatner let's go level change Okay, there you go. So it's climbing now again. Looks good. Climb checklist is done. There's some checklists as well. Turning off the landing lights, runway lights, engine start switches back to auto. I'll be back with you guys once we're cruising, okay? Hang with me for a second. Cabin pressure differential, we can go and check that here as well. So here, the differential is around 5,000 feet inside the cabin. That's around here. So it's around flight level 220, was it? 
Oh no, cap. Sorry. Uh, differential pressure is here. You know what? Skip that. <laughs> I, have to, I have to still study how that does. How that works. That's we go. Okay, now set fasten seatbelt sign. To auto call. We're leveling off again. Set that to 18,000. Flight level 180. Level change again. Stop taking pictures. There's a bridge. Yeah, we're in Albuquerque. Heading. Just the heading. Sorry, it's taking all my concentration just to keep up to speed here. You know what? Let's just climb to 370 so I don't have as much as much to worry about. Okay. Altimeters. Nah, that's fine. I'll worry about that later. Let's keep <laughs> That's true. Ooh, cloud cover. How are how's the temperature? 9 degrees. Okay, so we don't really need anti-ice. Hopefully. Yeah, I know, right? That bridge is just amazing. Passing 18,000 feet. We go to standard altimeter settings. That is beautiful. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Cloud surfing. Right? Oi! Oh no. Oh, come on! Uh. Cloud surfing caused us to crash. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's one disadvantage of... Uh, having so many mods in. Too bad there's no autosave feature. <laughs> the good thing is now I can catch up on chat. You look like Superman out there. The plan has vanished. <laughs> the plan has vanished. <laughs> Please advise. Yeah, viewing the exterior is a recipe for disaster. No, but I think there's really some uh, scenery missing. Which uh, I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, let's have a look at the log. Um, let me have a look. X plane has shut down. Uh, what was the problem? Let me have a look. Failed to find resource textures. US New Mexico terrain. Oh, dang it. I'm missing something from New Mexico, looks like. Oh man. Okay, so what do we do now? <laughs> I don't think I want to repeat that. At least not the same flight. We'll just have to skip through stuff maybe. Hmm. AP trim, lock position. Oh, that's fine. Blame it on the clouds. <laughs> the wall got in between. <laughs> oh my goodness. Error could not locate image file for terrain. So it's looking for a DDS file. I don't have it. Let me just double check. Um, New Mexico. Textures. Hang tight, guys. Looking for 2609.06. Yeah. 2609.6.13760. Indeed, it's not here. Oh, dang it. NAIP16. Yeah, it's not here. So that's a problem. 
But if it doesn't find it, should it crash? Because I, I heard that if some things are missing, it just doesn't load. But not that it really crashes. So I'm not sure if that's the main problem with it. Maybe we just have to find a different flight. New Mexico is the fault of SES. The revenge for not streaming trucking. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh my goodness, so many things could go wrong. Well, it was fun while it lasted. So suggestions on what we should do. Plan a totally new flight. Just go faster. Any ideas? I see why Jack didn't get on the plane. Yeah, he was the lucky one. <laughs> we could crash in so many ways. My goodness. That explains why Bob got the internet cables. Yeah, he was just protecting us, seems like. <laughs> just copy the terrains from ATS. Yeah, tomorrow is trucking. Yeah. Quite different. So yes, I'll have to avoid New Mexico in the meantime, I think. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's a shame. Cancel that. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Let's go and look for one. What else can we do, right? Just have to get back up when we get pushed down. Something along those lines. Okay, so we avoid New Mexico for now. We probably can go to Texas as long as we head east. Find any place you guys want to. You guys want to go to the UK, Inverness? I have no clue how to fly there though. New Mexico is a mo it, it's there, but the scenery files making the things look more realistic. That's what I plugged in. So that's part that part is a mod. Guys, still falling. <laughs> Didn't you bring your parachute with you? I thought everybody had to have their parachute. Canadian flight. I can go with Canada as well. Are you guys fine with that? Let's go for like which which place in Canada? Find any place familiar? You have a whistle. <laughs> there are airports from Mexico and I should have charts for all of these as long as it's a big airport. So we should be fine. So let me know where you want to go. Montreal, that's near you. Where is Montreal? Montreal International. CYMX. You can go with that. Let's see what job it has. And then I'll try to just buzz through the the startup procedures. Okay, that's N53768, this guy. It's actually going to the US. Going to Ohio. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, we can take that. Iceland. Do one from AAKL. Where is it? Is there, is there, did you see it here? Oh, there's nothing here. Let's go to Washington. Is there a Washington here? I think I saw something a while back. Uh, Washington, Virginia. Is that? No, I think that's different. Seattle. That's the one for sure. Fly under one of the new bridges. That sounds good. Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. I think I like the Washington idea. Let's try and see what where this leads. Seven three seven eight hundred is the SUHCX. This guy going to Alaska. Should we do it? Going to Alaska. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, what could go wrong? So that is headed northwest, 790 nautical miles. So that was a very quick flight for a clumsy 010. <laughs> Let's go for clumsy 011. Departing Seattle. Arriving in Bajan. 
Okay. Seven three eight. How many passengers? One one two. Okay, and next this time I won't be going out the window anymore. <laughs> Nineteen oh five outdated. Yeah. Because today is May 23 already. We don't have the new one yet. Fix or airway R0 R1 1055 not found. Oh, interesting. Why is it always taking us towards the. Okay, this one. Banger 9, Bango, Kevna. Okay, let's see how that looks. Took a flight from SeaTac from Puerto Vallarta. How was it? So a new flight plan. Should be like that. That is how it looks. Not too shabby. Okay, let's also plan the stuff here. So I think I'll save it from here instead. The flight plan from here is much more dependable. So, winds are 280 at 10 knots. So if we do this, there's actually no... There's only one runway. And that's... Wait a minute, that's a bit dangerous. 0927. <clears throat> Juno 0927. Um, yeah, 0927 or 0826. But if the winds are coming from the winds are two eight zero coming from two eight zero, so we have to find something like that. Which one is the longer runway? This one, runway two six, is what we have to do. What we have to take. <laughs> In terms of visibility, ten statute miles. So that should be good. A few clouds, but nothing we can't visually approach. So that's why it says VFR there. So yeah, let's take uh, runway 26 as our landing runway. Okay. That looks good. Runway 16C. Alright, let's save this. Now, uh, what is a nice... Format. What is FMS3? No, no, no. Okay, first let's put in everything. Um, so that looks good. 112, everything good. Let's generate OFP. <clears throat> A flight around the world. Yes, you can, actually. You have to have the proper plane and you'll have to fly it in real life, one is to one. So how many hours that takes, that also takes that many hours. To be fair, there is a uh, there is a, a time lapse feature, but it's not very reliable. And if it can crash one is to one time, it can crash even more so with that kind of deal. All right, Tramel, have a good one, man. Thank you. Flying through Canada, are we? Oh yeah, we are. Cool. All right, nice. Hey Barry, glad you made it. Thanks for joining. Alright, let me see here. Flight level three flight level three eight zero. Okay. That looks good. So now I can save it. Juno, okay. Alright. So 
So let me load up explain. Fly the whole world, he didn't need sleep. Why not? <laughs> there are some folks, although, that do that. They like cross from Europe to US or from US to Asia. So they really fly the entire day. Fly to Switzerland, maybe. <laughs> there you go. Let's go and load. Seattle, good weather. 6 a.m., that's perfect, so we can get some sunrise going. Um, so we see 300 at 8 knots. Actually, 34R is the best one, right? Looks like it. Let's go here. The shortest one. Shortest trip, S15. Okay. Let me load that up. Let me check here in the meantime while that's loading up. So, it said runway 16C here. I don't really like that. So, I'll probably change this. Instead... Undo, undo. The banger. If I want 3, 4, right, we can go for banger 9 still. Yeah. Hey, Thor. Thank you for the raid, man. Welcome back. Glad you made it. We are picking up our uh, ourselves <laughs> after falling a quite a steep altitude. Banger 9. Yeah, I don't want runway 16C. So we go banger 9. Transition to Pangle. Use that. Runway 3, 4, right. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Perfect. Okay, so with that, 3, 4, right. I save it again. I remove that and then let's take a snapshot so we can load that into AV tab. That should be good enough. Save that. Banger 9, that doesn't sound serious. <laughs> yeah, the names they come up with in these things, uh, I don't know. I don't have an explanation. There we go. We are back. Back from... <laughs> back from the beginning. Back to the drawing board, as they say. Alright. Let's do this quickly. As quick as I can, at least. Let's see how fast that we can manage it. Let's do this as a time attack mode. Alright. But let's still go through the checklist as much as we can for safety. Okay. GPU is connected. Battery is closed. Gears are good. Bus transfer, ground power enable. Panel lighting, we're good. Wheel well light. Turn that on. Position lights to steady. Electric hydraulic pumps. Fire, fire test, I'm going to skip. Emergency exit lights, turn that on. Fasten seat belts to on. Attend. There you go. Mic selector, co pilot view, put that to one. Cargo fire skip, circuit breaker skip, stall warning skip, flight recorder skip, oxygen skip. Then this one is essential the IRS alignment. And then, I'll put the spark of my checklist looking back on chat so I can get up to speed if there's anything. My internet is being a problem now. Who? Who? I hope not us. 
Can you skip the checklist and not crash? They can skip a few of the checklists, but there are some essential items in there for flying. Alright. Like the master lights, we can skip that. AP lights. Barometric pressure, that one we need. So let's go back to AVTAP, to the airport. Uh, it's actually 2988. Uh, no, 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 no. 2998, 2998 as they say. Set the same thing here. Good. Minimums, I'm going to skip that. Not really that essential for our case. Standby altimeter. Yeah, that looks good. Skip through, take off config. Let's connect lights. That's fine. UTC, you don't need that for the first officer. Let's test this because it's nice. Flight slow. Pull up. Good. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Ah, yes. Terrain. That's probably Terrain. because the game was loading, so the, the systems Obstacle. got overloaded and stuff. Obstacle. Because Pull this up. game, when it loads, this sim takes up the entire CPU and GPU capability so <laughs> it's hardcore nav data out of date by one day so that's correct yes let's initialize the position is it set already i think it's already set one minute has passed okay let's set that good there we go seattle Good. Set the root. Set that's origin. What's the destination? I always forget the name. Pajan. Okay, Pajan. Juno. Good. Clumsy. 011, was it? Okay, C. Pajan. Let's hope this loads properly. Nice, nice. It even plugs in the runway. 3, 4, right. Yeah, that should be fine. So let's double check. Runway 3, 4, R, Banger 9, Pangol. Arriving, this one doesn't have. Okay, yeah, because we wanted to pick 2-6. Yeah, that's the one. And let's just put in like, uh, I don't know, 10 mile final maybe? Is that too much? Usually it's 5 mile final for P1D. Let's put in 10 miles just to be safe. Okay, good. So, they will Atom Brim. Banger, Pangal, Kevna. There's a discontinuity. So this one you can see, it puts in a another waypoint, another leg that is 10 miles from the runway. Angled at the runway heading. There we go. Let's remove the discontinuity. That looks good. Alright. <clears throat> okay. Perf in it. Smooth. Zero fuel weight. Oh crap, this one we need to do. And I think this might trigger some stuff, but we'll see. Because I forgot this one. So, plant fuel is, uh, block fuel is 2624. 2624 is actually 3078. Let's put it 3079 3, 3, gallons. Yeah, I think it was not the internet, it was my PC <laughs> getting overloaded, so it couldn't uh, send the information enough. Okay, that looks good. Let's go to FS Economy and set that. Yeah, I think what happened before, I think the GPU goes out. But let's see. If 
you can do that. Oh, now it's working. Okay, perfect. All right. So if you look for weight and balance, compare the tick of weight. Um, weights should be 137.8. Fuel is 20.6. Okay, that should be good. 137.8, that's 4.4. So 25.6 payload. Something along those lines. Wait for it to compute. Did that get computed ready? There, 137.8. 137.8, perfect. Okay, good. Get back here. Zero fuel weight. Reserves. We go back again. That's uh, 7.5. 7.5 for reserves. Cost index and altitude. Cost index is 7. Altitude is 380. 7. 380. Oh my goodness, here we go again. <coughs> Here's Conan. <laughs> That's what happens when you lose your internet. Goodness. Hope that never happens again. Not a pleasant experience. So 341030. Positive 2. 341 30 that there 2 celsius that there good all right that looks good do we need to put in the descent forecast oh, fine I'll just put one um, 107, 190, 007. 107, 190, 007. Something like that, I think. If I read it right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Hey Franti, thanks for joining. Hey pilots. Make sure to get on the wing again. Okay, now's your chance. Now it's your chance to really get in the plane. <laughs> okay, there you go. Alright, let's do this. This one you can actually skip, the doors and stuff, but it's just so immersive, I, I don't want to skip it. Service and cargo doors. Block fuel, start service crews. Alright. Your damper. Fuel pumps. Double check the fuel. Okay, everything is good. Cross feed valve, let's skip that. Window heats, yeah, that one we need definitely. We saw what happens, we don't when we don't have that on. Everything thing turns to grey once you get up in the air. Trim air, yes, we need that. Air conditioning pack as well. Okay, cruising altitude is 380. I doubt we'll finish this flight, but just to get into the hang of things. Elevation for the other airport is actually, look at that, 2 3. Is that right? 23 feet, wow, almost sea level. Cool. Okay, so we just set 50 here, landing altitude. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Spider behind you. What? <laughs> Wing light we don't need, anti-collision light is still off, steady, logo light, mission select. I think already turn start to be the APU, because we'll be getting there soon anyway. Well we're working on this. 
MCP, flight directors on. Courses, yeah. 25 degrees bank. Runway heading is set. No, we didn't set that yet. Three four right. Just three forty four degrees. Okay. Just the heading. Three four four. There you go. Initial climb clearance. Uh, let's just stick to nine one. Auto brakes. RTO. Fuel flow reset. System oil pressure check. 8 yes looks good service crews stop what you're doing close the doors guys you can now come in get comfy all that stuff start the flight leg okay check everything is good I think it will crash. Thank you for the support. <laughs> think it will crash or are you going to leave? Um, yeah, we, we have to end the stream in an hour. I'm not sure if I can extend it, but we can try. Make sure to get knowing again. <laughs> Your good luck. <laughs> okay, let's close the doors. They're not really in yet. Should we wait a bit? Just a bit. The flight attendant should let us know when they're in. Easy, easy. Let's go with our pushback planning in the meantime. So, we should be facing the left. Okay. There you go. Whatever she's saying. Alright, so I think we can close that now. To the announcement. Folks from the cockpit like to welcome you on board. We're ready up front. Everybody's closed up outside and we're just waiting to uh, get some of our uh, performance numbers and uh, the clearance from uh, air traffic control. So we go for something like that. Right on the line like so. Ground to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Still loading the in-flight Twinkies. Ground to cockpit. Still I know, right? Up. The sounds are so good. They're so immersive, especially with headphones on. So good. Alright. Here we go. Root performance. That's good. Perf in it. That's the one. Zero fuel weight. That's accurate. Uh-huh. Execute FMC gross weight Take off performance calculator, okay and one limit set the temperature that should be good already Take off flaps five Center of gravity set the V speeds trim is 5.2 Okay, all doors and hatches are closed ready to connect <clears throat> Speed uh, 145. Good. Trim value 5.2 something. There we go. And we can now close the door. Everybody loaded, guys? Alright, APU is now starting, and we started it a while ago already, so that should be good. Uh huh. Generators. If you bleed, we can now turn that on. So connected and bypassed and inserted. Release parking brake. Not yet ready. You just hang tight there. Disconnect the GPU. Go with the chimes. Going to get back to you guys in a bit. Wait for me. Contact ATC. Yada yada. Transponder. Yada yada. Start pushback, anti-collision lights, 
And now we can release the parking brake. Look at that. Parallel processing power. The thing is, I cannot click it. There you go. Starting push back. And you may start engines. There you go. Just ignore the trolls. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> In flight Twinkies. An Italian pilot. Left and right or air conditioning packs, turn that off. Engine start two. Let me catch up on chat while that's happening. Trolls mean bridges. What? <laughs> I don't get that at all. Was that a reference to a different game? EGT climbing, looking good. Loving the engine spooling up. Love that sound. Also, this might become very bad because I realized my physical throttle is all the way 100%. So when st and start moving it out, it's going to be very bad. So I'll do that later. Get either. <laughs> okay, at least we're on the same page, right? I love that pushback system. So immersive. Oh, sorry. Introduce fuel. Trolls live under bridges. Oh, they that kind of actually figures. Wow. Look at that. Walder and uh, Stad. Uh, how did it? Stadler and Walder combo. <laughs> Lower Operation the display complete. off. Set parking brake. Parking brake is set. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Generators 1 and 2 are good. If you switch, we can off now. Engine start to continue as for takeoff. Probe heats on. Left and right packs, isolation valve auto, APU bleed off, takeoff laps 5, disconnect, flight controls, it doesn't get considered, there you go. Come on. Oh, come on. There we go. That's left. That's right. Oh, disconnected. I'm bypassed left and has been removed. Right. Hand signal on the right. Well, see you next time and have a safe flight. There you go. Turn off. Taxi. Perfect. Almost there, guys. Can you cross when you fly? What do you mean? Crossing what? Okay, track I are good. Let's wait for the bypass pin. Okay, here, here it is. Okay, so what I can do as well, uh, parking brake release, brakes test, uh, one sec, one sec. Before I do all of that, I have to make sure that we are set up here. So we take, just turn left towards Bravo, and then the end turn right. Okay, that's simple enough. I can do that. And we need a departure chart as well. Banger 9, isn't it? Banger 9, we're right there. Um, now, where are we headed? 2-6, so that's somewhere. No, 3-4, so we're headed north. Okay, that's good. Okay. Dodd V, stuff like that. You look at the legs here. Take off flaps. I hope I didn't miss anything. Dove, that way. Okay, good. All right. I think we're good now. Parking brake release. Test the brakes. Okay, chimes.
extend there we go elnav oh crap here we go elnav doesn't work sometimes and i don't really know why sometimes it's because of the emergency can you talk to the game there is an atc a built-in but it's not very good so i just disable it usually sometimes there is something that is not activated and that's making all the problem that one for example so when you leave something not active then it disables you from uh, hitting lnav or stuff now it's still not working so maybe there's still something that's missing Perf is active and will limit takeoff. Yeah, that looks good. I don't know. Let's just uh, figure it out later. But usually there is that bug with the LNAV. It's either a bug or I missed something. We'll know soon enough. For now, let's go heading select. Let's follow the start the chart, which is saying after we take off, we go 344 four heading straight to Dodve. Okay. So 344 four heading, yeah, that's the right one. Okay, good. Let's go. Yeah, in VATSIM, you can do that in real life with uh, virtual air traffic controllers as well it's so cool but it's so scary for me but i like it it's just one thing i have to get used to take off weather radar airport terrain for that guy okay Ponder. Good. Strobe in steady. If I can actually reach it, there you go. Taxi lights off. Left and right landing lights on. There we go. Three, four, right. Here we are. How are the winds? I forgot what the winds are. Windsock is facing that way. Why is it facing the wrong way? Do we have tailwind actually? Well, I don't know. Hopefully not. Set the timer, set the thrust to 40%, and once that's in 40, we can go toga. Hold my hand on the throttle in case it gets pretty hairy. Oh crap, that's bad. 80 knots. Stay in the center line. D1, rotate. rotate. There we go. Positive rate. Positive rate. Gear up. Elna turns on now. 400. 400 turn on autopilot. Air speed, let's climb up to 210. 1000. Start bringing up my flaps here. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Makes you miss flying. It's so good. It's just being able to fly after all that prep is really just so fulfilling. <laughs> One to three bits like before. <laughs> Has to be at least at least ten bits now. So it's a bit more challenging. Flaps up. 
That's good. VNAV active. VNAV is active. And let's just climb all the way to 380. Flight level 380 and not worry about it anymore. Keep your fingers crossed, guys. Contact ATC. Landing gear is off. Up is different from off. Auto brakes off. And terrain radar for the first officer, we can turn that off as well. Good. Good to go. Ah, let's go and check from the passenger view how you guys are doing. Who's in the wing? Who's seated, seated here? Is that Alex? <laughs> Very detailed model. Okay, now we're actually flying. Right wing. Go back to the cockpit though. Some more things we need to focus on. Smooth. We're finally up. Finally up in the air. That's where we're going. Banger and then panel transition. Above 10,000 and banger, that makes sense. It's, it's quite foggy outside. But it's not too shabby. Clumsy gets irritated. <laughs> it is quite distracting, that's true. Go to the co pilot view. Let's go and activate the legs here. For the FMC, let's go hit prog. Okay, landing lights. We can actually turn off as we approach 10,000. There we go. 10,000 feet, we can turn that off. Runway, turn off as well. Engine start, we can switch to auto. We're passing through some clouds here, but the temperature is still 13 degrees Celsius, so it's not bad. Cabin pressure differential, skip that because I don't know how to read it. And now we can remove fasten seatbelt sign. Heading bug. Just a heading bug, thank you for the reminder. Always adjust it whenever we reach a waypoint, or whenever we turn. Altimeter to standard when we reach 18,000. That's not happened yet. So let's just keep it for now. Look at that. Beautiful. Above the clouds like so. It is getting a bit laggy. I only have 26 FPS left. But it's so good. Turn on the heat. <laughs> yes, it's, it's on. It's on now. So the window shouldn't uh, gray out anymore. <laughs> Don't go outside no matter how good it looks. What movie do you show in this flight? What of the Clumsy Geek? Yeah, it's all the VODs you can pick. All the playlists. Let's have a look. Think of available beverages, as well as our fresh eats items can be found in the menus in your seat pocket. Please be reminded that Delta accepts only major credit or debit cards for onboard purchases of beverages and snacks. However, you can use your Delta SkyMiles American Express card to save 15% and earn double miles on all Delta purchases. For your enjoyment, HC is equipped with your own personal entertainment system. On you have a selection of complimentary as well as on-demand TV shows, movies, and music. You will find that this screen will work best with just a light tap at your fingertip. Feel free to use your own headsets. Otherwise, if you do need a headset, just let a flight attendant know they are yours complimentary for this and any future Delta flights. Pretty tall guy. Hides all your credit cards. <laughs> up, up, up. Can we go out of the plane? There we go. Oh, there we go. The people in front are actually watching. Only the first class people have, uh, the business class have a uh, movie. Is that me? <laughs> AI jumped off. Nice girl in white top. Good eye. <laughs> Let's go back here. Heading bug. Yeah, that's fine. We are approaching 18,000. So let me go back to the checklist. Uh, 
where was where were we? We were actually the Ethis panel. Altimeter set to standard, that's the one. Standby altimeter as well. Bank angle above flight level 310 degrees. Okay, that's not going to happen for a while yet. That's fine. Where's the ejection seat? Where are we? Oi! Oh, we're past already. Are we? That's fast. Man, that's fast. We're headed to Pangal. Oh, we're headed to Pangal. That's not to scale. That's not to scale. That's 43.1 miles away. Okay. So we, we can probably refer to the map actually. So we can close that. We can refer to the map from uh, from Little Nav Map. Oh, but that looks so good, doesn't it? Overlooking the mountains like so. Oi! What's happening? That looks so good from there. I would like to take a screenshot, but it might crash. <laughs> oh my goodness. Bremerton. I think I can actually remove track IR for now. So it's not too shaky. That's what we're seeing. The beautiful mountains. This is Mount Deception. Mount Constance, we're coming up ahead. Mount Constance there below. But if you look at the map from... Uh, what was it? KC pageant, that's the one. That's the flight plan. That's the idea at least. So it's still going to be a very long flight. That's the entire route. How tall are those mountains? Uh, not tall enough, thankfully, for uh, for it to be a threat. Uh, look at that beauty. The clouds and the mountains just combining, just merging in like that. That is beautiful. Goodness. Shall we risk an exterior view? <laughs> I see Scotsman down there waving at us. I know it's super hot here. It's like 30 degrees inside the room probably. And it's not a long shirt. It's a short sleeve one. <laughs> it just looks like it, I think. It's very bumpy. Lots of turbulence, although I'm not really sure if I like it. This is with a head shake feature. If I actually turn off head shake, it's super stable. Well, not, not as much. But is this better, guys, do you think? Or is the head shake more realistic? Because you can see the outside shaking like that, but head shake, sh head shake adds an internal shaking as well. use the loo won't be waving for long <laughs> 30 degrees inside yes super hot super hot that looks so amazing my oh my so many jadars there <laughs> Oh my goodness. So we're flying over Port Angeles now. Does anyone know where we are currently? Let me zoom out. Are we in Canada already? Calgary. Oklahoma City, Washington here. Not sure where the divisions are though. But yeah, that's Calgary. Seattle is here. That's where we came from. Vancouver. So that might be the border. Could it? Port Angeles. Victoria. Jay Setic didn't wear anything on this last stream. He had this. <laughs> <laughs> he 
he didn't have pants on. Maybe I don't have my pants on. Who knows? Almost in Canada now. Nice. Frame rate is getting better. That's good. Not as bad, not as cloudy in here. So, check on the airspeed. Crew airspeed is now 430. Ground speed is a little bit less. We will have a little bit of headwind. That's, that's fine. Minor issue. So we are now at 30,000 feet. I can actually set the bank angle now to 10 degrees. So that when the autopilot turns, it's not so sudden. And I guess that makes sense on higher altitudes. And once we level off, I can change the cabin lighting and I can ad address the passengers as well. So yeah, what do you guys think about head shake? Do you like it better like this or better like that? Is this a bit too shaky? That's the border. I'm just flying in real now. Flying in real life? Wow, this. That's the dream, huh? Anyone sitting in a jump seat in game? Which one is the jump seat? Oh, the one behind, is it? There's no one behind. Like, more stable one is the one you like. Okay, this, this feels less professional, doesn't it? Like we're doing something wrong. Okay, let's do it like that. Right behind the captain normally. Ah, there's no one. There's no one. I don't think there's a chair for the 737. Yeah, is there? Logbook. I don't think there's space. Or maybe there. That one? That's too low though. I <laughs> don't think so. <laughs> Man, that looks cool, huh? That looks so pro. Let me take a screenshot here. Hopefully it doesn't crash. That looks so professional. We're finally doing something right. <laughs> now landing is a different issue. There you go. A white shirt and strips. Oh yeah. I'll go look for something. Maybe one strip for now. Just checking my messages. Okay, some messages. Uh, let me just forward this to Mrs. Clumsy. Looks pro without the pilots. What does that mean? <laughs> you mean it? Uh, <laughs> does that mean there we shouldn't be here? <laughs> that makes things more professional if we're not in the picture. Cannot write while you fly. No signal. Air airplane mode. Yeah, that's my wife actually. <laughs> it's Mrs. Clumsy. But I get your point. It's on the wall. You lower the seat when you're going to sit down. Ah, okay. So somewhere... There, maybe. Yeah, that one? This black one? No, that's the fire extinguisher. The handle. Hmm. Maybe it's not installed in this cockpit. Man, that looks good. We should save this as a new view, huh? That looks so good. My goodness. Pretty bumpy though. Just on the right. The pilots don't look good. That's true. Is Mrs. Clumsy serving in the cabin? No, she's the one being served. Mrs. Clumsy is the boss. <laughs> she owns this plane. 
<laughs> yeah, we don't have the creepy duo, no? <laughs> there we go, we're leveling off. We'll go back to the cockpit. Almost there. 500 feet to go. And I have no more water. There we have it. Now the engine can take a bit of a rest, a bit of a breather. Right now it's almost at 100%. But as we level off, it should be able to dial down a bit. Mm, maybe not. Well, it's still speeding up, so maybe later. But yeah, we've leveled off, so what you can do now, and we've actually crossed over to Canada as well. Nice. Bit of glare there. Even the glare is realistic, I like that. So just it for less glare. So now what we can do... Is we can do the cabin lighting adjustments. Uh, cruise for passengers in white medium for the entry area and then we can do the level off and let's go and sit in the passenger so we can hear you're free to move about once you are seated we recommend you keep your belts fastened thank you that's it very short one short and sweet all right have a good one ap thanks for staying so long a closer meanwhile please sit back relax enjoy the trip with us nice Hey, super. Are you drunk? <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Go get some water. I will look after the plane. I'll trust you. Can I trust you? I'll go and get some water, but uh, you guys take good care of the plane, alright? So let me do this. Store all. Actually... Save that. Or should it be like this? Yeah, more like that, I guess. So what we can do is we can add a camera. And then we can go back here. Position ourselves. Down like so. Is that the same? I think we move forward a bit. That looks beautiful. That looks beautiful. Save that. Okay. So from here, the pilot seat, we can go back, get a better view of things. We can go to the co-pilot seat as well. Right? Perfect. Should I have 3J cabin sounds? Oh, right, right. Yes. Um, but uh, Zeebos actually comes with those as well. So right now we're, we have a Delta livery. So it has some Delta-related uh, sounds in there. It's pretty cool. I think it's, it was something similar. But yeah, for other planes, that would be a great suggestion. Thanks, I'll go check it out. Houston, we have a problem. My lights are not working anymore. <laughs> it's been a while since this acted up. Once please watch, I'm so drunk. <laughs> Stay safe, man. Right, mods, please be on the lookout. Alex and Jay. <laughs> if uh, Super kind of types something, he doesn't normally would type. Uh, 
that's as close as I can get. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. Just a bit of messing around with the cables. Sometimes it works. If I hold my hand up like this, it works. Oh, that's a no-go. Oh yeah, that works. Perfect. Alright, game. Have a good night, man. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Appreciate you making the effort. Let's go and check out the map. How are we doing? If we focus on the trip, we are not even halfway, guys. Look at that. That's the entire trip. So I think what we can do now is we can fast forward stuff. So we get to that exciting part, right? You guys could do that? Skull. Is that Skull? I think it's like more an O than an A, right? Look at that, top of descent, 539 miles. So far away. Alright, let's go and make it faster. We can go slow. Oh, wait. Sorry, guys, good with time adjustment. You can stream for longer time. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can, though. <laughs> Skull. I would love to go to Norway someday and drive a car in those beautiful uh, mountainside roads. Not the ones which are hardcore though. Then just turn on the AC, start to really heat up in here. It's currently. I don't know how hot it is, one sec. 29.4 degrees. 84% humidity. <laughs> Just a car is fine for me in real life. <laughs> truck I can leave to the experts. We must drive a truck in Norway. Negative 30 degrees Celsius in here. True air temperature. Man, that looks good. That looks so good. Goes to Norway to drive special transport. Why not, right? Why not? Oh my. Okay, I think we'll have to speed it up, guys. Let me zoom out here. See if we can see something. Top of descent is more than 300 miles away. Okay, like, I don't know, 500 miles away. So let's speed it up. 84% <laughs> Yeah Not very comfy There we go Superman Now the problem is This might go a bit go. Problematic With the We almost hit the speed tapes in there uh, Yeah this is a bit of a problem doesn't play well with fast speed so maybe times 2 or times 4 would be okay but time 16 I think is too unstable it's not meant for this kind of model because what it does is it's kind of a fake uh, there are two ways to accelerate time and explain one is really accelerating time and that requires double quadruple the processing power because all the things need to be adjusted and there's the pseudo time adjustment which is basically actually just increasing your ground speed so just making it faster and accelerating time, I think. Something like that. And that's what I'm doing, the simpler version. Because with the hardcore version, you cannot even go beyond two times. It's going to be too uh, taxing on the CPU and GPU. So let me go eight times and see if that's more stable. Yeah, eight times is actually not bad. You can try in your sim. Oh yes, yes, your hardcore sim. That would be amazing. 
with the hydraulics and all that stuff what how do you call it again hardcore stuff yeah eight times is actually pretty good pretty stable so far so I don't think I'll be getting water anymore <laughs> getting pretty unstable though I'm looking at the altitude but man that just looks good doesn't it from this view oh my amazing yeah this is the complexity I was craving for this level of complexity and the checklist is a, really a it's a boon. I wouldn't be able to fly it that fast without that awesome a checklist. And I mean, the 737 is a pretty classic design, right? So it doesn't have those electronic checklists yet. But I hope they switch to that eventually because everyone else has it already. Even the Premier 1 jet has it electronic checklists look at how fast that waypoint flies by in this uh, co-pilot view let's go with that right super cool okay that looks good oh crap we're actually veering off now Let's see if the game can handle that. Yeah, type, at time 16 it really just goes wild, but times 8 I think is not too bad. Motion seat. <coughs> that works. So I don't think it accelerates time. Yeah, it's just accelerating the speed itself. Top of descent is over here, 366 miles. So we're coming pretty close. Fuel flow, fuel we have plenty, no problem. Okay, it's looking good. There's a full motion seat, not company, full motion seat company not far from you. Nice. Are you thinking of uh, ever getting into it? I think it would fit you very well. What is direct drive wheel? What does that mean? Clouds popping up. Motion seat sounds horrible to you. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why don't you like motion seats? Wheel attaches directly to the electric motor. <clears throat> Ooh. Fly with three people in the tower and have to report into zones. Oh yeah, that's him. Yes. Once we get familiar with the 737, we can go back and combine 737 and Vatsim. Because I think I can do Premier 1 and Vatsim, but 737 and Vatsim not yet. Direct drive wheel is much stronger feeling and more accurate, very smooth. So that's like built-in force feedback. But how does it link up with the, the sim though? I guess the simulator has to give out some signal sometimes, right? And very expensive, I can imagine. I can imagine. Oh! Starting to have problems with the loading. Getting pretty unstable. Very 
very expensive. <laughs> so maybe a 2080 Ti first. My CPU is really working for it. CPU utilization is 70%. All threads being utilized. <clears throat> Fanatec wheel shifter and pedals is more than 2,000 US dollars. Wow. Thousand USD. Like a whole new PC already. Is it that good, the Fanatec stuff? That's for the hardcore simmers, right? Is it really way different? Some sceneries aren't loading right anymore. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. If there's a missing something, I would expect that it just doesn't load like that. So you get a hole in the ground, but you don't crash. So maybe it's the exterior view that does us. I don't know. Use G29 for now. I have not tried the direct wheel. A thousand dollars there. Actually come down. It's time to get in. <laughs> yeah, quite interesting how that plays in with the simulator. If the sim can utilize that. 165 miles to go. Wow. I think this is one of the farthest trips I've taken. I can zoom in now at least and see it in view. So top of descent is coming and then we'll be approaching. Okay, I should be starting to load it in. I should start to load it in actually. Yeah. So let me load up pageant. Actually, we don't have RNAV, so this is going to be a visual approach. No instrumentation whatsoever to guide us. Maybe just some papi lights. Altimeter 3016. Yeah, nothing else there. One thousand is that just a wheel? Wheelbase, wheel itself, and a button box. And there's software as well. No pedals. Wow. 36 pounds. <laughs> Hardcore indeed. Wow, this. Alright, we're coming close to descent. Three zero one six. Let me put that in the standby in the altimeter. This is what I like about this. You have the standard, but you can also at the same time prepare something. So by the time you switch over, you just hit the button and you're already in the correct uh, altimeter setting. Fifty five, fifty miles away. How is the weather there? Visibility is good. Clouds up to 4,500. Aside from that, looks good. Weather looks good. Wind is uh, 240, 11 knots. Okay. Slow down here. Normal speed. Right. Cabin lighting. We do that for landing. We go white bright. Let's go and make the announcement for the descent. Decision altitude height. There is nothing. 
We're just going to assume it's a thousand feet above. Can't buy that much jewelry. I'm going to skip that. Um, there should be a chart somewhere though. It's in the trunk there. Let me have a look. Wildlife and birds, that doesn't sound good. What else is there? Standard minimums. There we go. El Nav, no. We should have like an LTV or something, right? 1880. Let's go with that. Yeah, 1880 should be fine. Something like that. One sec, guys. Huh? Get back to you. So we're 15 miles away from the top of descent. Eyeless frequency, that's not applicable. Courses, um, you can look at the airport, look at runway 26. Wait a minute, let me double check the flight plan as well if we are indeed landing on runway 26 because we're in this 240 knots. Yes, we are, good. So runway 26 is heading 265 degrees. Okay, so let's set these just so I have a guide. Also the other one. 265. Bank angle below flight level 300. Yeah, that's fine. We'll worry about that later. Okay. Okay, one sec. Uh huh. Nine miles to go. Let's check the flight plan. The co-pilot seat. Legs. Uh, 0 0.77. Flight level 9,000. I can't see it from here. Um, let's go that way. 9,000. Okay. So uh, altitude we can actually lower down to 9,000. So by the time we reach top of descent. The FMC will know that it can actually descend as much as it needs using the indicated vertical path angle. Five miles away from top of descent. Can't buy that much jewelry, I know, right? Not possible. There's actually like a localizer that popped up. Weird. Good night, Thor. Uh, who's sleeping? Oh, there we go. Yes, tomorrow. Thanks, thanks a lot, Thor. Have a good night, man. Sorry, read that late. Two miles away, top of the scent, and we should be golden. We should be good to go. Let's say we park somewhere. Let's, let's designate a parking spot. Um, well, not really. Can't find parking areas or anything. I just have to wing it. Let's park somewhere there. Control tower terminal. And somewhere there, near Bravo 2. There we go. We have started our descent. Drag required. Speed brakes on. So if you look at the mirror, you can see the speed brakes are enabled. That looks good. It's difficult parking on. <laughs> That's a good question. We will see. We will see. End of descent in a hundred miles. Okay, that's fine. 
pre-cruise, no, not that one. Descent checklist, that's the one. Bank angle below 30,000, let's wait for that. RHP mod, what is that? <laughs> what are you saying, Super? How do you how to do how do you do to have multiple windows with the charts? It's AVTab, and then I have Navigraph subscription. So AVTab is connecting to Navigraph, and that is giving me access to the charts in this tablet. And the Zebo three seven three seven is syncing AVTab, so all the different uh, connections. So Zebo seven three seven connected to AVTab connected to Navigraph. Real hard parking mod. Ah, we could probably. The problem is with that kind of thing. It's a bit. Um, what do you say? It's a bit finicky, right? It's a bit sensitive to mods and to updates. They it gets incompatible very quickly. Is this for ETS two or ATS or both? Thanks. High speed brakes open. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes, you nailed it. And now I think we should actually remove speed brakes because we are throttling really hard here. We don't need to be throttling at 80% N1. It works with 1.35. Ah, nice. So maybe until Pro Mods comes back, it should be good. Not really hard anyway. I think we need speed brakes again. There we go. Good. What airline are we flying? Delta. Well, clumsy. Clumsy airlines. <laughs> you caught me. Straight on landing for the 737 is considered Charlie category. So the barrier should be category C. Ah, thank you. Thank you for that info. That makes a lot of sense. So it should be this one, 3200. Thank you for the info. I don't know these things, these minimums yet. This is something I still have to study. That really helps. Is it 3 2? Yeah, 3 2. How dare you, 737? You have to be Ryanair. <laughs> We're in the US. So I'm still a bit um, clueless about this. When do you know that you have to enable speed brakes? Like, I, I know the, the warning where it says like, drag required, and I enable it then. But how do I know when I need to turn it off and turn it, turn it on again? Is that something to do with the arm here? Or does that not have anything to do with it? Bank angle, yeah, 10 degrees. Uh, ILS frequency, that should be good. There we go. Now, now we can do the landing calculation. Landing performance, so prog. We currently have 10.3 right now. We'll be in pageant 8.7, so that's 1.6 difference, was it? 1.6, so that means in our init ref, cross weight should be reduced by 1.6, so that means 125.6. I think there you go and then we can use 40 degree flaps hit that twice the minute there you go auto brakes there's also a calculation for auto brakes but I'm not familiar with it so I'm just going to set it to 2 
Fast and seatbelt signs 15 minutes before landing. We are uh, supposed to arrive at 14.35. Right now it's 14.12, so that's, I don't know, 20 minutes. Let's just, let's just enable it just so we get that one less thing to worry about. I think Jack fell off the way. <laughs> Put it to maintain the speed you should have. Do not leave them below speed or the plane loses lift. So, okay, so when we start falling below the speed that the FMC has programmed, then we should think about turning it off. Like, right now we shouldn't have it on because we're not reaching that speed anyway. Makes sense. Thank you. Zebo increase your speed a lot. Same with me, yeah. Open them until I notice that the plane does not come down with a lot of these vertical speed. Ah, okay, I have to pay attention to that. So when the VS changes here. Okay, thanks. Still here, just tired. 4, 4 a.m., goodness. Yeah, super tired. I can imagine. I cannot last that long. Category C. So 3,200 is a missed approach. That's fine. 11 a.m. hype. Yeah, they have to finish. We have to finish, guys. You are still in Gdansk. <laughs> so altitude for the airport is uh, 24 feet. So if I can maybe put the minimum, I can descend up 3,200 in terms of the altitude selector. Actually, I can go even lower, right? I should be able to go like, I don't know, 1,000 feet above. Something like, I don't know, 500 feet. Because I'm planning to turn off autopilot once we reach 1,000 feet above ground level. That's the plan at least. Let me double check the altimeter setting. 3016 still. We do have 3016 on standby. <laughs> Iveco or Vatsim. <laughs> I have flown in Vatsim but not so much yet. I don't have much experience. I'm practically a noob. But I'm planning to go back once I'm from more familiar with the 737. Once I'm comfortable with it. Right now because right now I don't even know how to climb. Like, let's say, for example, you're at 5,000 feet, initial altitude, and uh, you reach 5,000 feet, so you maintain that. And then air traffic control tells, gives you clearance for 8,000 feet, so you adjust the selector to 8,000, right? But then from there, how do you tell the plane to climb up? Do you use vertical speed? Do you use level change? Or what is the best point for that? Altimeter, we're switching soon. Oh crap, I see some mountains. That's scary. Let's turn on the terrain radar for the co-pilot. Okay, nothing. Nothing on the radar. That's good. I see some green stuff there though now. Let's hope we don't descend so much. <laughs> okay, let's switch to the local altimeter. 3016, let's set that up as well for standby. There we go. And then what? I have ISFT heading from left IRS only. They say it's approach for ILS, but I'm not sure if I really need that. Anyway, I'll put that in. Vertical profile, we are right bang on the descent profile, basing on those indicators there. That one, vertically and laterally. I think we'll need speed brakes soon though. Okay. Once we pass 10,000, I'll uh, switch on the landing lights. That's not going to be for a while yet. Zoom in a bit there.
missed approach is 3,000 feet, is it? 3-2, okay. 3-2. Usually descend to the interception altitude of the ILS. You can see it in the charts. For the climb, you just let the autopilot do it. Yeah. If you'll flew with your feelings. Later, we'll be flying with our feelings because it's a visual approach. No instrumentation whatsoever. <laughs> Elevation 23, is that what you mean? Or is it this one? 58 to 21, I don't know what that is. Yeah, no ILS or RNA for this runway. So we'll be just doing it manually. Actually, I want to check. 26 without ILS. I'm not sure if it has puppy lights or anything. We'll see. But yes, we'll be using our feelings. Granted, I don't have very good feelings with the 737. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll do our best. Winds are pretty good. I think winds are 2.6, so we should have very good headwind. Actually, they're 2.40. Just a little bit of crosswind, that's practically a headwind. That's good. Terrain. Terrain is green. Yeah, we're fine. No worries, Jack. No worries, man. <laughs> have a good night. <laughs> Waking up with a pattern of keyboard on your face. Thanks, man. Have a good night. Catch you next time. Well, catch you tomorrow if you're available. Get some rest. Man, that looks pretty low to me. That looks scary. And in terms of temperature, it's actually 3 degrees. Okay, it's good it's summer. Or almost summer. You don't have to worry about so much the uh, anti-ice thingies. We actually have a tailwind, a little bit of a tailwind. This is a very nice descent. 1500 vertical speed, 1500 feet per minute. Not too bad, not too abrupt. 255 indicated airspeed. Where is that deploy float switch? <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm hoping we don't get that uh, uh, that alert with the ground. That, uh, what do you call that? Not TCAS. TCAS is for aircrafts. Um, alert, alert. Uh, what is, how do you say? When there's a mountain in front of you, like with that volcano. <laughs> Might not be a good deal. Okay, that's 10 miles from runway 26, that next waypoint that we're heading to. So we should be starting to slow down after we reach that point. 10,000 feet is coming soon. Let me bring up the checklist. Wow, we're really descending very slowly here. But that's fine. Can we descend faster, I wonder? Or should we be descending faster? No, I think it's good. Vertical profile is good. We're right bang in the middle. It's really just like that. Okay, 10,000. Landing lights. Runway turn off lights. Logo and wing light not needed. Terrain radar is on. Contact ATC. Let's say that we did that already. Let's simulate it. Where are we headed again? Is this Alaska? Alaska approach. Clumsy 011. What do I say now? <laughs> I don't know. How far are we? Let's say around 35 miles from runway 26. 
Juvenile Airport. <laughs> that didn't make sense at all. Okay, this is why I don't vats him just yet. Okay, let's do the announcement. Prepare for landing. Minimums are set. And now we can do with the flaps soon enough. Those mountains are coming in pretty close. It's quite scary. <clears throat> so I'll start setting up the flaps as we turn that uh, 10 mile distance. Oh, come on, what changed? Weather changed. Oh, it's still 240. It's still 3016. Okay, that's good. Alright. Diesel. Diesel to what? Let's have a look at the legs here. 151. By the time we reach runway 26. Well, I guess I can start slowing down now. So, speed intervent. Lower it down to the up speed tape indicator. And then we can lower our flaps then. So I'm not really sure when pilots start configuring their plane, their 737, but I'm guessing around 10 miles should be more than enough. Cloud cover, that's fine. That's fine. The cloud should stop after we descend around 4,500 feet probably. Something like that. Hey, AB, welcome back. Yes, 40 degrees. Uh, let me double check. Drag required. Okay, drag required indeed. Yeah, 40 degrees, 131 knots. It's the VRF. There's actually a glide slope. I can turn that on. Ooh, interesting. There you go. Turn that on. So it will act like a. I'm not sure how it will go. But let's see. Maybe it works. Oh my goodness, those mountains. Is that for real? We're still in the air. Welcome back, AP. How did you get back? There we go. Flaps. First level. Thumbs up, no? Yeah, we're extending a bit. So, you want to finish this. Unless we hit those mountains, because those are coming really close now. Those are becoming yellow. Goodness. Is there a note about this in the airport? Maybe that's why there's no runway 26, because you can't do it. Let's remove the speed brakes. Maybe that explains it. Is that something we should see? She should be able to see. No, but there's like a, a approach lights here. So I'm guessing it should be possible to land in runway 26. But yeah, that's pretty scary. Look how low we are. <laughs> I 
Okay, I see. Coming really close, but we're, we're actually turning left already, so I think we'll be safe. I think we'll be safe. Oh my goodness. Or maybe not. <laughs> Look how low we are. OMG. Yeah. I'm thinking something's wrong. Up. Oh, up. <laughs> there you go. Turn off auto throttle and uh, autopilot because we need to do stuff on our own for now. You have to oh, manually up. do this. Oh, up. Oh, up. Feelings don't help with mountains. Yeah. Remove those flaps. Let's fly manually. Enable the terrain. We need terrain information here. There you go. It's more like it. That's more like it. Called it. <laughs> There's still a chance. There's still a chance. Still climbing though. Get some flaps in here. And I am turning all the way around. Not in a good way. There we go. I think we've cleared it. Follow the flight director. Alright, that looks good. Flaps 5. 2500. Four lock switch, no such thing. Missed approach altitude. Runway heading. Run. Missed approach altitude is 3200, I think. There you go. ATC didn't tell me there are mountains here. <laughs> Start descending now. We are 3.6 miles away. Actually pretty high. the heck is the runway? I'm looking at it. There it is. Landing gear down to help with the drag. Stayed for 2 hours 30 minutes. Nice. That's end of route. <laughs> yeah, I know. Did the airport not load at all? Oh, there it is. Whoops. Yeah, right behind the mountains. Okay, that's bad. Very bad. So we can probably 
go down a bit more. 2500 minimums. Go around, of course. There we are, just passing through. Alright, have a good one, man. Thank you for staying that long, appreciate it. Problem is, how do we go around this place? There's no clear indication. And mountains are everywhere. I think we'll just probably have to land with a tailwind. 2-6 doesn't really seem feasible. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Arnav 2618, Arnav 08. Using reserve fuel, I know, right? 1,000 feet stabilized, Mr. Burch Allen said. No, 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 no. Stop. Mountains everywhere about to say they're there but you passed it already <laughs> thanks not the best landing I would say loop around oh crap this is bad guys bank angle bank angle there we are all right okay Phew. So that one's set. Runway 26, we're almost there. So hard. How do we fix this? Runway 26. I can't really see it. We'll just wing it. See there? Oh, there it is. So far away that this is bad, guys. <laughs> We're landing, whether we like it or not. Oh, that's too high. Way too high. It's not going to cut it. And we have tailwind. Tank rate. Tank rate. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Three hundred. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Two hundred. Tank rate. Tank rate. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. One. Ten. Reversers, don't fail me now. 80 knots. Making it. <sighs> Best landing. <sighs> So, um, my throttle doesn't work anymore for some reason. Why? Did it get broken? Hello? Did it hang or something? Best landing. <laughs> it kind of worked. Let's, uh, 
I know we're, we're stuck in the middle of nowhere. Parking brake. Not sure why my throttle doesn't work. Maybe I screwed it up. Finished flight. We finished it. Yay! <laughs> that was smooth. <laughs> we got lucky. Let's let's replay that before we end the stream. Yeah, we, we kind of hung out in the middle of the runway. Not sure what happened, but I guess I broke something. I think I had my speed brakes the entire time. I had so many things gone wrong there. So that was poor flight planning on my end. So high. <laughs> so, so, so high. Here we are. Not too bad. Kind of uh, made it up, made up for it in the end. It's coming in too fast, but thanks to the flare, kind of balanced itself out, and then gave a subtle nudge. But yeah, actually, I had my speed brakes the entire time on. Look at that. <laughs> so many things went bad there. And this is the 40, 30, 10. first person view. I'll take it. Take over for Jack. Blame Disney. <laughs> well, at least we finished it, but now we know why Runway 26 is not published as an approach. I just wish there was like a, a warning. Maybe there is. Maybe there is, and I just didn't read it. Anyway, alright, let's leave it there. Let's check. My throttle really doesn't work anymore. Something went wrong. Anyway. Let us leave it there, guys. Right in the middle of the runway. Thank you for staying with me. We kind of made it work. Emergency landing kind of deal. <laughs> Not the smoothest. Oh, there we go. Ah, my reverse thrusters were, wasn't working. It didn't close all the way. So now, now it works again. Okay, cool. Good. Now we can taxi out of here, at least. Good. So let's do that. Let's finish it. So we do an end-to-end -end kind of deal. <laughs> Thank you. Let's just do this one last bit. Yeah, the winds are quite strong actually. 737 BDF. <laughs> what is BDF? Long stream time indeed. Not sure why the throttle is acting up like that. Oi, you're overshooting it. Laps up, clear runway. All uh, drunken. Zigzagging along the taxiway. Terrain radar off. I, and I want to finish this because there's something really fulfilling about uh, shutting a plane down completely. Like, Starting from cold and dark and ending in cold and dark. It's super cool. Altitude off. Good. Flight director is off. That's for GA. Weird. Let me turn on APU. So by the time we get there, it's ready to power up. So hard to multitask. Airspeed 100. Hang tight with me, guys. Just a few more minutes. 
final stretch. Altitude is 18,100. This is not it either. Is there even something for airliners in here? Maybe this is for GA. Is there a gate? Maybe all the way there. Oh, there in the back. Okay, let's just stop here. <laughs> Park in a hangar somewhere. They can tow us. We can stop here. Let's them let them worry how we they take us to the actual uh, gates. Wrong airport. <laughs> so that's why. <clears throat> it's like someone's doing more scope or something. Cabin lighting, white medium for passengers. Probe heats off. Anti ice, good auto engines. EPU, good. Good, now we can cut off the engines. Shut down. Taxi light off. Parking brake. Light deck door. Isolation valve open. EPU bleed on. Fasten seat belts off. Now they can really get off. Chimes off. Fuel pumps off. Turn off the pumps, turn off the window heat. Anti collision lights. Transponder. White, bright for passengers. Let's open the doors. How, how they go come out of that, I have no clue. Cargo doors as well. We terminate the flight leg. And then we close the cargo doors. Last stretch, guys. Almost there. No damper. IRS. Set that here as well. Trim air off. Engine bleed off. APU bleed off. Air conditioning packs off. Recirculating fans off. Position lights off. Emergency exit lights. Turn that off. Also these ones. Middle APU generators, turn it off as well. Turn off the APU. Standby power. Battery. And then we close the door and get out of here. And we can call that a full flight in a way. I, I can't wait for this to actually go out and signify that we're done. Now that is a full flight. Parked in a GA <laughs> stand. <laughs> anyway, a flight and a half. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Anyway, thank you for hanging out, guys. Thank you for staying with me. I know it's super late, super long, but thank you. Appreciate it. I'll catch you tomorrow for some trucking. Phew, we made it. We made it somehow. Lots of things went wrong, but... Uh, it's a work in progress. Hopefully next week, a much smoother flight and a better runway. 
Thank you. Have a nice day, everybody. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, whoever is still here, pilots, or and whoever else is watching. Thanks and have a nice day. Have a not that great weekend. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.